Sunday on Lee IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm at the BT Sports Studio in Stratford today uh, for the Billy Joe Saunders versus Willie Monroe press conference. With me, I've got new trainer of uh, Billy Joe Saunders, Mr. Dominic Ingle. How are you? How are you doing? All right. I'm great, thanks. Good. Um, Billy, not, not, he was on form a little bit today. Um, told him that he could see that he had no mental strength. Uh, what did you make of that? Um, yeah, Billy can talk well, can't he? Do you know, I've never really watched Billy in a press conference. Everybody keeps telling me that he's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know he's quite sharp and he is he is very sharp he, he knows he's already got planned you know what he's going to say he knows how to to wind the opponent up and I think he got, he got to Willy biting today so I think he's going to warm up he goes along Willie wasn't giving much away he wasn't being the sparring partner verbally um, I think you know Billy put him into his shell straight away and I think it's upset him a little bit uh, because nobody likes to be told about themselves and, and what the failings are, and I think you know Billy's tapped into that straight away. So yeah, it's uh, it's all starting to warm up a little bit. Um, he touched on that sixth round against Golovkin and said that basically he's a quitter. Mm. He's got no he's got no bottle. Um, have you seen the sixth round yourself? I've seen it, of course, because I watched William Monroe Jr. when he boxed uh, Golovkin. Obviously, when I trained Kell Brook, I watched all the fights, and I looked at that guy and thought. I didn't even know the result when I was watching the video and I thought this kid is causing Golovkin's problems and then you know he, he, he got caught with a few and he unraveled a little bit and you know we've had a lot of this quick talk and especially with Kell Brook and, and certain fighters you know I don't personally subscribe to that way of thinking you've got to think of the you know the long-term view when it comes to boxing but you know when you go into a fight, you don't think anything's going to happen to you. You don't think you're going to be in that position. But as a coach, I think weighing up everything, you have to look at, you know, what circumstances the fight was made in. Did he get five weeks' notice? You know, maybe he was physically prepared because, as you can see, he's in good shape now. But some fighters, and I know from the past experiences with fighters like Johnny Nelson, that they need longer to mentally prepare for fights. And we're not going to get, you know, caught up in it and and overlook that because William Monroe, if he realises that he wasn't mentally prepared, the one thing he's going to be working on is being mentally prepared and he's been given a lot of time to do that. So as Billy's saying, I know you're going to quit and I, I can see the quitting you, yeah, maybe Billy can. But that's not going to be the game plan because if Billy Monroe has gone to a sports psychologist or mentally prepared himself this time, because he won't regard Billy Joe Saunders as Golovkin, he'll maybe regard him as two or three levels before. So is Billy going to have that kind of mental edge on him? It's good that Billy's got that in his mind, that he's got a kid who he can make quit, and he probably can. But I just think that Willie's been given an opportunity, and he's been given plenty of time. And maybe them two years out of the ring is what he needed to be able to switch himself back on again and deal with what he did. Maybe it took him two years to get over quitting, maybe it affected him that much. So, you know, Billy's going to have to be switched on for this fight and he's going to have to come in, you know, with his best game because, you know, he's pushed Billy's buttons and, and Billy's going to go back to America now and he's going to give it everything. So, we're not expecting an easy fight, you know, it's going to be a case of Billy's going to put him on it, he's going to fold. I don't think that's, I think it's going to be a very, very tight 12 points fight with ups and downs in it. Um, obviously, inactivity was always going to play a part no matter who Billy faced, but do you think it's quite a, it's quite a good choice of opponent that he's fighting someone who hasn't fought in a year or so? Yeah, it is good. I mean, Billy's been on and off, but when you can fight, you can fight. Um, you know, if somebody stops you in the street and, and they're going to put it on you, you're not going to say, well, give me a couple of minutes or a couple of weeks to prepare, you're going to have a fight. And Billy comes from that lifestyle, <laughs> doesn't he? You know, he's, he's a traveller, isn't he? So, um, the thing is, is Billy's had enough time to prepare. I think we, he's been training for the last three weeks. He's been ticking over before that. He's been with Adam Booth training. So he's in, he's in the zone. All right, he's been out since December. Uh, it is a good decision with Munro, but I think, I don't know whether there's a choice or whether that's were mandated purely because everybody else in the top 10 couldn't, you know, couldn't, weren't in the position to fight Billy. So it's good in that sense, but looking at William Munro Jr., he's in good shape already. So he's been doing something, hasn't he? He's not, you know, he might have been inactive, but it doesn't mean he hasn't been sparring and keeping himself sharp and everything else. So, you know, then, you know, we can't overlook that, can we? Um, up there, he said that when he fought Golovkin, um, he brought up into a situation he's never been in before where he was in a 15,000 seat stadium and 14,990 were against him. Mm. Um, he's fighting Billy in London, in his hometown, in front of a crowd that are basically going to come watch Billy anyway. Um, it's going to be the same situation. Do you think you might fold under the pressure is, again? It is, but look, like I said, I've been in boxing a long, long time and I've had the same experience with fighters who've looked a million dollars in the ring and they've boxed at a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 seat arena. 
Then they stepped into the MEN at 20,000 with the big screens above the ring, the big crowd, and they've unraveled straight away before they got into the fight. So it's a very viable excuse and it does happen. And you have to get used to that situation. I don't think, you know, it's gonna happen again because you'll have dealt with that situation. But if you've been boxing, in, like in America, you've been boxing you know, against, in front of a thousand people and it's just much of a muchness when you get into the ring. And then you go into that, it is unnerving. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you don't experience it before. So that's another thing is hopefully is, is addressed. Uh, and he's going to keep him stronger for the fight. Obviously, um, the man like Barry on the weekend, Kid Galahad, got the win, yeah. got the strap. Um, Billy's housemate as well. Um, yeah, I'm saying, that, you know, we put him in with somebody, the, the most disciplined kid in the gym. Um, this is this is how you do it. This is what, you know, Barry's not even at that level, not at Billy's level. He's trying to get to that level. He's trying to get to that level. And even when he gets to that level, he'll still be doing what he's doing. We, you know, I've known Barry for a long, long time and they get on like a house on fire. Billy, you know, is looking at a young kid there. Well, actually the same age, <laughs> the same age. And he says, that's what I need to be doing. And if you see people doing it, making, uh, you know, committing themselves to it, making sacrifices, you know, you can be a fantastic fighter. Billy watched the fight. It was a, a good performance from Barry. Um, and it will make Billy realize and switch on. That's what you've got to do. That's what you've got to do. Don't take it, you know, for granted where your position is because as a champion, you never think you're going to get beaten. And when you do, it's a very, very, very hard place to be. Do you understand? Yeah. And you don't ever want to be in that position. Um, obviously, Billy, uh, it's no secret how much he, him and uh, the top of the bill, obviously, on Saturday, Chris Urant Jr. Uh, don't see eye to eye. Um, why do you think Billy's still got such a sort of, not a bee in his bonnet, but he still rants and raves and slags him off, even though he's beat him. I mean, why do you think he does because it? Because I think Billy's, you know, the, the re he considers himself the real deal. He's a WBO world, proper world champion, where he probably regard, regards Eubank as an IBO champion, which is, doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, and they're talking, you know, the, the Eubanks are talking like they're the best thing since sliced bread, and I think it really irks B Billy in that way, because he knows he's beat that guy, and they're talking like they've never been beaten. Um, so you can understand that, and at some point, who knows? Who knows where that's going to end up? You know. Would you be confident if you, if you had to take that yeah, fight? Yeah. Somebody asked me, he said, "How would you see? How would you see that fight going?" I said, "Well, I goes before Billy came to me, you could see Eubanks winning that fight, but I goes because I'm training him. I says Billy beat him again. Oh, I disagree with you. I well, fair enough. You can, you're entitled to your opinion, but you know. Billy, by his own admission, said I wasn't 100% for that fight. But if I'd have been Billy, I said, you know what? I trained hard for that fight. That was the best I could be. Is that why up in there when he said, "Don't give the game away"? Yeah. Don't give the Is game that why he said it? Yeah. Don't give the game away. <laughs> don't. Never let anybody. But you know, because, like I said, with, with boxing, it can all change from fight to fight, and. Uh, you know, Billy's a character, he's, he's shrewd, he's clever, you know, he, he knows his way around the ring. Uh, there's little things, there's little changes you can make. And at his, le at his level, the extra one or two or three percent change and gain will be a massive improvement for him. You know what I mean? And, and the, the, you know, we, we have, a, we have a, a, what we call a performance triangle. Certain things you can change, where you can change things a lot, and, and only certain things will change a little bit. His boxing ability will only change a little bit by one or two percent because he can already fight. That doesn't need a lot of adjusting. His diet and nutrition will probably, it's, it's, it's changing maybe 90%. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So there's, there's, there's things you can change a lot, and there's things that, uh, and you can change a lot and make a big difference. Do you understand? And there's things you can only change a little. Well, there's a whole buffer over there, and Billy sat next to him and didn't not touch bothered, it. No, because he's, 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 he's actually he's realised what it's all about. You know, there's, there's a time to eat food, there's a time not to eat food. You know, before training, after training, between the certain things, and you could have this, you could you could have the same food intake in the day, but eating at the different times and at different stages after your training, it'll affect your body differently and your recovery differently and your weight gain or your weight loss differently. And he's learning that now. Whereas before he was a bit ignorant to that fight, thinking if food's food, I'll be eating it, it makes a difference, I'm burning it off. But he's, just, he's, getting, edu he's, he's getting educated without realising he's getting educated as well. It's all going in the memory banks and it's just going to become a habit with him. Make him a new man. Well, yeah, but listen, he's got to do it. He's, he's got to realise you can't. You know, he will get exposed. If he'd have stepped into the ring with Golovkin or a Canelo, <laughs> You know, um, previous to his fight in December, he would have got he got done in, and he's probably thinking, "I don't want that to happen." And that's the thing what motivates motivates fighters: the fear of getting beat. 
you know, and beat bad uh, in front of everybody. So you know, he's made he's made the move, and it's a big commitment to move away from home. It is. He's got a, a, a family. He's got kids. He's got a missus. He's got a lifestyle. He's a world champion. He's got a few quid. So you know, it shows to me that. It's more than that. It's more than having the money and all the trappings of success. It's, it's about wanting to achieve something. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, he was a world champion for a couple of fights, move on to the next one. You know, you look at Bernard Hopkins, uh, great fighter. You look at Golovkin when he finished his career, always been known as a great fighter. Mayweather, if he doesn't get beat by, okay, guys. he'll be known as a great fighter. If he gets beat, his legacy's gone. So, you know, everybody wants to make a name, but, you know, how many times do you hear? One of the greatest fighters we ever had, Joe Calzaghe. How many times do you hear his name mentioned? Now you never hear it. But what a great fighter he was. So, you know, you've got to make... And he was unbeaten. So you've got to make a name for yourself in this game. And, uh, you know, I think Billy can do that. He's got the charisma, he's got the chat. He just needs the big fights. Well, it's big time on uh, September 16th. And obviously yeah. after that, it could be... Could be the big one. That's could, it. could be the big one. But obviously, Dom, uh, I'll let you crack on because you've been speaking for hours now. And I'm I sure know, you're pretty yeah, bored. Yeah. But um, I'm sure Coogan or James will be up into Sheffield to see you. No problem. Well, me, I might get the trip. You never know. But I'll, I'll take you through right. a workout. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll, get them, we'll get them 12 and a half inch arms up to 12 and three quarters. Oh, offended. Just because you go on, give it. Go on. Like that. Look at that. Jesus. All right. Well, listen, Dom, thanks for coming to IFL TV and I'll catch up with you soon. Talk see you later. Thanks.